log. It's working. All right. So I'm in charge of the deck. So let me start that. And um, all right. Can you see? Can you guys see it? Um, okay. Cool. All right. So welcome. We're going to learn how to uh, get your micro bit to talk to an iPad and use it as um, as a switch uh, interface and switch scanning. And um, this project is meant for um, novices, <laughs> people that don't have access to a 3D printer or know how to solder, uh, and um, but want to be able to um, to get access to their kids in like a variety of ways. So uh, kind of building off of like what Mickey Mickey has done with uh, all their lovely alligator clips and uh, assistive tech stuff. Okay. So the what and why of switch scanning. Uh, so some people are coming from uh, maybe the like uh, tech education world and some are coming from uh, the disability world. So um, this will be like a little bit of an overview for some people or new to some people. Uh, I'm just gonna show this like super quick uh, two minute video. Uh, this guy, Christopher Hill, I don't know if anybody knows him, but He's awesome. He has um, cerebral palsy and he is a um, video editor. So he created this whole video and he has a whole YouTube channel where he creates videos about accessibility. Uh, and he pretty much does everything. I don't know if you could see those two blue things by the side of his head. Uh, that's how he does everything. <laughs> so I'm going to press play and you can uh, take a look. Oh, let me know if you don't see the, if you don't hear the audio. Ah, Christopher. I think there might be a slight problem. Well, you can't exactly touch the screen. The foundation of everything Christopher does is an accessibility feature called switch control built into Apple devices. Christopher says, with switch control, I am still limited, but it's no longer my body that limits me, it is only my imagination. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, a single switch, even, even uh, better. All right, so that's kind of a, a general overview of what um, what you can do with it, which is pretty cool. Um, and this little um, gadget that we're going to build today uh, is used to um, is used for people that maybe have a motor disability, so either strength um, or um, maybe coordination, kind of like Christopher, that they can't control uh, their movements, or sometimes maybe um, um, vision issues, maybe they can't. Um, you can't see the so um, it's pretty simple. It involves um, the micro bit and some alligator clips and um, some things that you could do with it uh, is navigate the iOS system uh, with just two buttons. We're going to be using uh, manual um, settings, 
And so that's if you're able to press two buttons and then it kind of toggles through. But there are other settings uh, like auto scan or single switch scanning. Um, so you can pretty much control your entire iPad and also um, Mac OS with this system if you want to connect to your computer. Uh, other things you could do with this gadget is um, control your communication app. So a lot of people use a, uh, things called AAC and, and these are like grid-based communication systems where you enter in words and then um, you get speech output um, if you have difficulties communicating. Uh, you can also um, use it to create and play like very simple cause and effect games. Um, and here in the in the slides, there's a, a link, Help Kids Learn, uh, actually put together a really nice um, switch progression um, handout. I don't know if you know it already, but I found it super helpful. So those are some things that you could do with it. Um, on the market, this stuff is like super expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there's not that many of it. There aren't too many options. So like um, there's, I think probably the most popular one here is this orange and white one. It's called uh, the Bluetooth and it's from AbleNet um, and it allows you to uh, connect to your iPad uh, through a Bluetooth connection, but it's $220. Uh, <laughs> recently they released a, a Cosmo system and that one is a single switch. It's around $190. It does come with some uh, activities and um, curriculum, uh, or you can also build a, a Bluetooth switch interface. And so that's where you can connect uh, multiple pre-existing switches into there. And um, so that's the market. Uh, it's pretty cost prohibitive uh, if you're not, um, able to afford that. <laughs> so why this design? Uh, Microbit is like about $20 with, you know, the battery pack and the cables, and you could pretty much make it, uh, you can make switches out of anything. Um, it has a pretty reliable Bluetooth connection, because, uh, oh, that Bluetooth. <laughs> Um, and you can also do some uh, alligator clip connections. It has like three pins that you can um, connect to. And so then you don't really need to solder. Uh, and you can not have to have a 3D printer. So you can make the case out of pretty much anything. And this particular, um, oh, I forgot introductions. This particular project also has um, the make code. So it's a uh, block based coding. And Bill created this very, very lovely uh, extension uh, that lets uh, make code um, and the micro bit talk through Bluetooth. Uh, there's some other alternative access ideas. So, um, so these all do not include soldering. Um, you, if you have pre-existing switches that your clients are already using, uh, this little setup here just has the two alligator clips and then with marine terminals, you can just um, connect a mono jack um, to the two alligator clips and then you just use the switches that you're already using. Another setup is something like similar to this where you can like just get arcade buttons um, that you can get from um, Amazon, we've got many, many varieties of it. Uh, and then the connections here are also solderless. So like the wires themselves are, um, are called wire, uh, no, jumper wires. And so they connect to the, um, the buttons, this like orange, this gray box with orange or, or wagos, ragos. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> um, but those you just kind of like uh, slice open the wires and stick, stick them in there. Uh, and then you could just also do just a wire cap. So, I mean, it's obviously not as stable as soldering, um, but it's pretty stable. Uh, and Bill also designed this lovely system uh, using um, a low cost guitar foot switch. Um, so if you wanna use your feet, uh, you can also do that. I don't know, Bill, do you wanna add anything? Uh, yeah, so it's also solderless and it, uh, it does use um, 
uh, kind of nylon bolts there to make the connection. So it's, it's pretty stable. It's pretty easy to put together. You don't need many tools. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we have instructions to build that in there also. So, I mean, those are like some alternative ideas, um, but the sky's pretty much the limit after you, you know how, to, how to, this all works. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna turn it over to Bill. Okay, um, so uh, MakeCode is a, a system designed to allow kids to, to learn how to program. So it's really kind of a tool used for computer science education, but it makes programming accessible to, to just about anyone. It kind of uh, simplifies a lot of the, the ugly details of learning how to program computers. So hopefully it's uh, something that uh, people with no prior experience can pick up pretty quickly. Um, so we're going to be using this uh, device called the Microbit. There have been two versions of the Microbit. We're using the newer version, this, this extension thing that I, I uh, created that handles the Bluetooth stuff only works with this particular version of the Microbit. Um, it's the first version of the Microbit came out about six or so years ago. Um, it was a, a tool to kind of introduce kids to computing and uh, in particular physical computing, kind of creating Internet of Things sorts of gadgets and um, kind of introducing kids to makerspace sorts of activities. So the microbit itself has a, a whole bunch of uh, built-in sensors and outputs. So um, you can see in that upper picture, uh, a description of some of the connectors it's got. It's got a USB connector at the very top. And then you'll notice in the middle, there's that heart. That's actually a grid of little lights. And uh, depending on which lights are on or off, you can display different pictures. So we're gonna make use of that. Um, it's also already got two built-in buttons. Uh, you could do all of this with uh, just the micro bit and use the built-in buttons and maybe build some sort of a case for it if you wanted to. Um, we're gonna use uh, external buttons just because they give us a little bit more utility and you can make bigger targets to hit. Um, okay, uh, the bottom picture shows what the back of the micro bit looks like. So it has a reset button on the back. It's also got a, a battery connector on the back. Uh, and then it's got the main processor right in the middle of the micro bit. In the upper left-hand corner, there's a weird little um, uh, coppery uh, jagged pattern that represents the uh, antenna for the Bluetooth radio. So those are kind of the basics. Got a whole bunch of stuff. We'll use a little bit of it. One of the other things that's kind of nifty is it has a, uh, a built-in accelerometer and compass. So the accelerometer can be used for um, detecting like which way it's tilting. Uh, so it'd also be possible to make devices like a... Um, uh, a mouse replacement or something that's based on tilt or head tilt instead of purely switch based things. So I think Loretta, you've also been kind of toying around with that a little bit, right? Fantastic. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to do kind of a, a couple little examples here of, of how to do the programming part. Um, so for these first two examples, if you want to follow along, all you'll really need is to access your computer. Um, we'll be using everything in a web browser. You don't even really have to install anything to use this micro bit thing. Um, you'll need micro bit and the USB cable that comes with it. So you'd be able to program it. Okay. So I think we're going to go ahead and do like two follow along examples now. So I think we'll switch over and I'll do some screen share here as I walk through the examples. In the slides, we do have kind of the full details of the, the first example, and we're gonna show the direct code for the second example. Um, so you don't necessarily have to go through the steps of creating it. You can kind of just uh, uh, work with it out of the box. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over to uh, screen share here. Everyone able to see my screen? Okay, uh, first off, um, so anyone who has already used the micro bit, just uh, for those of you who are on uh, video live now, just raise your hand if you've used it. No? Okay, fantastic. Just wanted to. Okay, so um, as I said, one of the great things about the micro bit is you can program it entirely from your web browser. Um, so almost all things micro bit start at microbit.org. So if you're following along, go ahead and open a web browser and go to microbit.org. And once you land there, you'll notice that there's a, uh, a button that says let's code. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then there's a button that says the make code editor. I'm gonna click on that. So you could also go directly to makecode.microbit.org instead of going through those three steps. Okay, once you land here, 
go ahead and click on the big uh, purplish button for a new project. And we give it some sort of a name. So I'm, I'm just going to use name. I'm going to create a kind of a simple little example name tag. And then I'm going to hit the create button. OK, so I'm going to talk just a little bit about what you're seeing on the screen now. Um, so this is the editor. Um, so should look something like this for everyone. It's kind of divided into a couple of different regions. So this region over here on the left has a simulated micro bit. Uh, for a lot of things, we can kind of test our work purely in the web browser before we have to worry about the actual micro bit. Uh, there's also this little tab here. I can slide that out of the way if I need more space. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Um, this middle part is kind of for toolboxes. So these are where we get the parts, the building blocks we're going to use to create our program. And then over here on the right, this is kind of our uh, program area. This is where our code actually goes. Uh, and you'll notice that there's a, a bar up above. I'm going to mostly ignore that for now. And we'll come back to this bar down at the bottom and uh, use it in just a minute. So I want to start off with something really simple that just shows my name on this little screen. So this little screen kind of can act like a marquee. Information can scroll across it. Um, so notice that there are already kind of two, these two purpley blue things already in my little workspace here. One of them says on start, one of them says forever. Um, by, by the way, if anyone has any questions or I need to go slower, feel free to type something in the chat. I'll try and keep my eye on that. Um, so these kind of weird block things that kind of look like a big letter C, um, those are called event blocks. So basically what happens is these are the, the things that our little computer is going to do when a particular event happens. So as you might guess, on start is really what it does when it first starts up. And forever is what it does when nothing else is going on. So anything I put in this forever thing is going to happen over and over and over again. Um, so I'm going to first off do a, a quick demo of what happens with on start. So I'm going to pull out this block that says, set, says show icon and has a little picture of the heart. So notice that I, when I click on basic, it gives me this list of different parts. If I click on these other different categories, I get different lists of parts. They're also color coded. So this light blue, uh, these light blue parts come from this basic toolbar. So I pulled out the little heart here and it's all, all grayed out. I'm gonna put it up here in on start. When I do that, it's gonna click into place. And so when my micro bit starts up, it's gonna show this little picture of a heart. Okay, I'm gonna go one step further and then I'll pause for just a second. I'm gonna to go to basic. I'm gonna pull out the thing that says show string. I'm going to put it in forever. So my simulated micro bit, anytime I make a change, it updates and it showed the heart briefly when it started up. And now it's going to say show the word hello forever. So you can see it scrolling across H E L L O exclamation point. And it's doing it forever over and over and over again. Hey, okay, I'm going to pause for just a second. Everyone doing okay? Okay, awesome. Um, so if I wanted this to be a name tag for me, I could just click in here and hello and change it to the word Bill, hit enter, takes a second for my micro bit to update. And now it says Bill over and over and over. This is an example where it's convenient to have a short name. Okay. So the next thing I kind of want to show off is how easy it is to get this to actually show up on the micro bit. Um, so hang on just a minute here. I'm going to uh, change my camera. So now instead of looking at me or looking at my micro bit, um, so my micro bit is plugged in with a USB cable to my computer. Um, so currently it's powered up because it's plugged in with the USB cable. It's a little hard to see, but there's the um, lights on the back here. Hang on just a second. I'm going to change my view just so you can see those lights a little bit better. Um, let's try this maybe. And hang on just a second.
Okay. Um, yeah, so, so there's the micro bit. Lights are on on the back. It's plugged into my computer. Um, okay, so uh, to get my program over to my micro bit, I'm gonna hit the download button. So bottom left corner. Um, when I hit the download button, it's gonna take a second and it's gonna give me a file that I'm gonna have to somehow transfer over to my micro bit. So it gives me some details here about what's going on. Your code is being downloaded as a .hex file. You can drag this file to your micro bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. Uh, if you're on a Windows box, the behavior may look just a little bit different, but notice that now down here, um, I'm using Chrome and it happens to, to show me the downloaded files down in this bottom bar. Um, if you've got a downloads folder, it may have just automatically put it into some sort of a downloads folder. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use my file browser to look at this file that it just gave me. So I always uh, have downloaded files go to my desktop. And um, when I look at uh, the, the scroll bar over here, it kind of shows all my different folders and things that I commonly use. And it also shows the micro bit and it's showing up just like a USB drive would. Um, so if you've used USB drives to, to transfer files, it acts exactly the same way. I'm going to drag this file over and basically drop it into that USB drive. And when I do that, the micro bit, it's flashing on the back as the, the program is being transferred over. So the little yellow light on the very back is uh, blinking. And then my Mac uh, is going to tell me that the drive disconnected and it disappeared from my locations here. And kind of the real highlight here is I can see my programs running because it's scrolling across the screen. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we, we just wrote a computer program. We programmed this little gizmo to do something. Does anyone have any questions? We're doing okay. Ready to continue moving on? Okay, fantastic. Um, okay, so every time I hit, every time I make a change, I'm going to have to download the new changes and transfer them over. For those of you who've done coding before, there are ways to directly transfer code over the USB cable. I'm not going to talk about those now, but just keep in mind that if these this file stuff of, gets old, if you get too many files, you, you, there is a way around it. Anytime we hit the download button, it's going to give us a new file. So I'm going to go ahead and throw away this this old file just uh, just to avoid confusion. The next one in my case would be named microbit name one, and then the two and three. Um, and I find that sometimes I, I mix up which one's which. So I'm just going to go ahead and move this one to the trash because I've already put it on my microbit. Okay. Uh, one other thing to note here is if I change my program in the simulator, put a whole bunch of exclamation points on the end. The uh, simulated micro bit is going to go ahead and update and change, and it will start showing those exclamation points pretty much immediately. But they won't show up on the real thing until I actually transfer the code over, until I go through that process of download and copy and drop again. Okay. okay. So any, any questions? Thumbs up, ready to move on? Okay, so next uh, we're actually gonna go through and I'm gonna talk through the construction of the program that we're gonna use for the remainder of the session. Um, if you don't have to follow along with this part, when I'm done talking, we'll paste a little link into the chat that will allow you to just directly open up the final constructed program so you don't have to follow all the steps. Okay, so as I'm going to kind of talk through my process here, um, the program we're going to create isn't going to have this forever block. So I'm going to drag it over and throw it away. I'm also going to go ahead and uh, change the name here. Blue bit. Um, okay, we need to use this, this thing called an extension that I made that allows this um, micro bit to talk to Bluetooth services. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that extension. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go up to the gear in the upper right-hand corner. I'm gonna click on the extensions button. And it drops me to this window. Your view may be just a little bit different than mine. I'm showing some extra stuff here because I write extensions. Uh, the name of this extension is uh, BLEHID. HID stands for uh, human interface device. So a keyboard is a human interface device, a HID device. Uh, and then I'm going to hit enter. And it found this extension, microbit PXT BLE HID, kind of a clunky name there. When I click on this little tile, 
it's going to uh, ask me whether it should get rid of the radio stuff and add this. That sounds good to me. We want Bluetooth. And it's going to change this list of toolboxes over here. So it's added a couple of new toolboxes. It's added this toolbox for keyboard, mouse, media, absolute mouse, and gamepad. Um, so this thing allows us to emulate several different types of devices. The only one we're going to use in, in today's workshop is the keyboard feature. Uh, basically, we're going to act like a keyboard. We're, we're trying to emulate kind of two different ways of interacting with iPads. Uh, that can be done by emulating two different types of keystrokes. Okay. Okay. Um, we also will want to know if we've actually successfully connected to our iPad. So oh, also notice that one other thing was added. There's this Bluetooth palette now. Bluetooth toolbox. I'm going to click on that, and it's got several different things: uh, accelerometer service, um, button service, all kinds of crazy names. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the one that says "On Bluetooth Connected." Basically, what we kind of want to know whether our um, iPad is actually talking to the micro bit or not. So uh, we're just going to put a little icon in here. I'm going to pull out the show icon thing. Um, and two hearts would be a little bit confusing. So if we're uh, talking to the iPad, let's change that to a smiley face. Um, I, it'd also be nice to know if we're disconnected from our iPad. So there's a, a similar block on Bluetooth disconnected. And I'm gonna also go up here to the basic palette and have it, uh, oops, got the wrong one, I'm gonna throw that away. I'm gonna have it show an icon as well. So I'm gonna pull this out. Uh, and I'm going to have it show oh, a big X, so we're disconnected. OK, so basically, I'm building towards some things that when we actually get to the point where we're connecting the iPad uh, to the micro bit, we'll get some feedback on how things are behaving. We'll know if our um, micro bit's running our code. We'll know whether we're actually talking to a Bluetooth device or not. OK, um, so we're about halfway done with our program. So uh, the other thing that we need is uh, when people interact with our micro bit, when they, when they touch those two buttons, we want to send keystrokes over to the um, iPad. So that's where the, the blocks that we added in come into play. So there's this keyboard block. So we want the micro bit to be able to act as a Bluetooth keyboard. So we need, this, uh, we need to add in this block that says Bluetooth keyboard service. And we want that to happen as soon as the power, the micro bit gets turned on. As soon as it gets powered up, we want it to start acting like a Bluetooth keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop that into on start. OK, and now we need some things that are going to deal with our buttons. So when we go and interact with our micro bit, we're going to use uh, these two little connectors at the bottom, 0 and 1, to connect up to our buttons. OK, so I'm going to click on the input toolbox here. And there's something that says on pin P0. I'm going to drag that out. Um, OK, so is there one for one? If we look down here, there's not one for P1. But we can drag out a second copy of this. And we can hit the little drop down thing. And we can say, oh, I want this one to work with P1. So these are going to be the two places where we connect up our alligator clips and wire up our particular button. If we wanted to add in a third button, we could pull out another one of these blocks and make it work with P2. I'm going to pause for just a second. Any, any questions so far? No? Great. OK. So next, we have to figure out what we actually want to do when P0 is pressed. And I'm going to kind of work inside out here. I'm going to first think about what we actually kind of want to happen kind of mechanically, how we kind of want to emulate a keyboard. And then after that, I'm going to add in it just a couple other details that will make it a little bit easier for us to interact with this device. Um, so uh, I think, so, so by the way, I'm just following Loretta's program here. Uh, she did all the work of actually creating the program. I'm just talking our way through it. <laughs> So credit where it's due. Um, so, so the particular uh, set of accessibility features that we'll be using today, uh, we're using the tab key to kind of represent uh, it advancing through things and the inner key to represent selecting things. Um, so we want to act like the tab key. So I'm going to have P0 be the thing that acts like the tab key. So I'm going to go down to my keyboard toolbox here. Uh, and I want to send a particular key. I'm going to go to the keyboard toolbox. So right now, the, this little thing 
this little box would let me type in what keys I want it to act like. So I could have it send over my name, but, but that's not what I want. I want it to send the tab key. And if I just hit the tab key here, I, I don't get a tab key in there. The, um, so I'm gonna add in one more block. When I click on the keyboard palette, there's a special one here that handles, oops, that's not the one I wanted. There's a special um, one here that an, handles special keys that don't show up as normal keystrokes. So things like enter, and tab. So I'm going to pick tab. So right now, this P0 thing, when it gets pressed, it's going to send a tab key. Uh, I want P1 to send the enter key. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. I want P1 to send a key. A specific key isn't something I can type. So I'm going to pick this bottom little uh, doodad, and it'll be the enter key. Okay. Okay. So the one other thing that would be helpful here is some context cues. So when we actually do press one of these buttons, it'd be kind of nice if there was some feedback on this, the screen that will show us which key was pressed. And um, different people interact with these devices at different rates. So it's kind of helpful to um, also have something that makes sure that accidental clicks don't happen. Like if someone pushes the button and they've got a little bit of a jitter in their hand, you would like to wait long enough to, to make sure that they've had a chance to release the button. Um, okay, so I'm going to start adding in blocks for those two concepts. One is for kind of the context cues. So the, for the context cues, I'm going to again kind of do wait basically what we did with the show icons. Uh, so we want the tab key to advance to the next item on the screen. So typically that's moving left to right across the screen. If I click on this basic palette, I could pull out this show LEDs thing and I could actually draw the picture that I want it to show or I could pull out the show icon thing again and see if there's an icon that I want. Um, here, it'd be kind of nice to show an arrow because we're typically moving from left to right. So I'm gonna pull out the show arrow. And as soon as we press uh, the P0 thing, we'll show the uh, east going arrow. So kind of pointing to the right. And after we send that tab key, it would be nice if that arrow disappears to kind of show that we're done with the motion. So I'm gonna go back to basic and pull the clear screen thing out, put it after. So now I've kind of set this whole set of instructions when pre P0 is pressed, we'll show an arrow on my screen, we'll send the tab key, and then later we'll clear the screen. Okay. Um, okay, one more thing to add. I mentioned that we should probably have a little bit of a delay in here in case someone has a little bit of a jitter. They, they push a button, but just not enough pressure somehow gets let up. Um, so we're gonna introduce a tiny bit of a delay in here um, for, for people who may need that, um, um, a little bit of time to solidly release the button. So again, from the basic menu, I pulled out this pause. We're gonna set it to 200 milliseconds. Okay, I kind of like to repeat these basic ideas down below. I could drag out those individual blocks, but as I said, I'm gonna share all this code with you and hopefully save you the effort of uh, constructing it yourself. So I'm just going to copy and paste these things over. And uh, when we press something, um, an arrow, we could use the down arrow, I guess, but an icon might be more appropriate. Um, in this case, we know that there's an, an icon that kind of represents a check. So we're going to go with that. Okay, that's, that's the entirety of our program. Um, I'm going to do a quick test of this. Uh, Loretta, are we doing okay on time? Is, do I have time to do a quick test? Good. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so I'm going to do a yeah. quick test of this. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to do a quick test of this and kind of make sure it works okay. Um, so let's see. Everything's good there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the download button. And again, it's going to give me a file. It might take a little bit longer this time. Uh, we've substantially changed the program. We've changed the code. Still not very bad. Not bad. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go through that process of copying it over to my micro bit. Uh, show in Finder. Notice that the, I changed the name of my, my project, so the name of the file changed to blue bit. Um, I'm going to drag and drop it on my um, micro bit. And again, I'm going to look at my physical micro bit here, and we'll see that the light on the back starts blinking yellow. Uh, it's still going to show the heart when it first starts up. So once it's all done blinking, the heart should uh, appear there. Okay, but hopefully if everything went well, it's now gonna be acting as a Bluetooth device. Um, okay, and we've also done these things for pin zero and pin one. 
So right now I'm just gonna test out the pin zero and pin one stuff all by themselves. Um, uh, just a minute, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick uh, just a single one of my alligator clips, so these little uh, clippy things. And I'm gonna go ahead and clip one side onto GND. So uh, there are different ways to connect these up. You can connect them up kind of from the bottom going up. Um, if you do that, sometimes the little connector gets turned a little bit sideways in short circuits. So instead, I'm actually going to kind of uh, bite onto this directly from the top. And then to test out the other, to actually test out the button, I'm going to connect one side to ground. That's going to be one of the sides of our button. If I want to test out button zero, I'm just going to go ahead and connect this up to button zero. And hopefully it just sent the key press for the left going arrow. I'm just going to manually disconnect it and reconnect it again. I'm sorry, the right going arrow, the tab key. Okay, that appears to work. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into one and hopefully it will uh, show the check mark. That work okay. There we go. Yeah. Good. A little bit slow there. Okay. So, right now, the, the piece that we're missing here is it's not actually talking to a device, it's not actually connected up to an iOS device. Um, Lord, have I missed anything? No, uh, and I think like as as um, you build this, you can play around with the um, with the timing, with the pause. Um, sometimes, if you have someone that's really fast with um, with the switches, you might even want to remove the the visual feedback because um, that also takes a little bit of time. But you know, it, you can since you know the basics of how it all works, then you can kind of know how to modify modify it. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and post uh, the, the full uh, project in the chat here. Give me just a second to find that link. Uh, just a second ago, okay. And, and I'm going to kind of do a quick example of, of uh, if you open this link, basically what you'll get. Um, so link is posted in the chat. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open that link in my web browser. I'm just going to go ahead and paste it in. So it'll um, open up kind of this, this frozen version of this project. Um, takes a second to load. It's basically the exact same project I, I worked through. Um, up in the upper right-hand corner, there's this edit button. And once you click that, you, you're basically exactly where I was just at. You're in the editor. You can use the download button and so on. Uh, by the way, one other thing to mention, um, Make code saves projects to your computer in your browser's cache. So, um, so if you move to a different computer, your, your projects don't go with you. Um, so it's often helpful to keep track of links. Um, there is a share button up here that you can use to share your work with other people if you want. Um, that's basically how we created this example that I just posted in the chat. Uh, that example is also linked off of the, the slides that have already been shared. Okay, with that, I think I, uh, if there are any questions, let us know. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen here and, uh, and turn it back over. Yes, maybe I have, I have a question. Yes. Um, sometime uh, Frédéric do the anchor man like uh, each, each Wednesday and uh, I record uh, on the dictaphone a message, uh, but he always, he continuously press on the switch and I need to uh, like the other, like 20 or 30 seconds that may, if he can, if he touch always, it's it's not gonna do nothing. Mm. Do you understand what I mean? So, so like, it, like sometimes the switch gets held down. Is that what you're saying? And, and if the switch is held down, it shouldn't do anything? Yeah. Or you don't? I don't want because it, it's each time we press, it's stop and play. It's pause and play. It's pause and play, and mm -hmm. I, I I need to uh, make him learn that he have to wait be, between each time he, he push on the, the switch. Can we do that? Like make a a delay or a latch? Of yeah. 30? 
Um, so, so it would certainly be possible to, uh, it wouldn't take a whole lot more code to make it a lot, little bit smarter. Um, so this environment, if you, if you do any coding, it's a, basically a full programming environment. You can actually do text-based programming too in JavaScript. So you can create a variable that represents this, this concept of your latch and its, its current state. Um, so yeah, if that's something you're not, you haven't done before and want some help, I'm certainly willing to help you after the, the workshop or, or independently, yeah. Thanks and there's, there's also um, an on release uh, event block in there. So you could actually do it in reverse where you hold it down and then the, the key gets sent when you're actually removing the hand. Okay. So you don't have to keep pressing, but you, I mean, like you, you keep holding it down and then it activates when you're releasing. And that's very simple. There's already a block in there for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Any, any other? No? Okay. All right. I'm going to try and see if I can get my, uh, all right. So I'm going to uh, walk us through how to, yeah. It's my lovely iPad. Um, how to connect this um, micro bit to, um, actually, maybe I'll leave it here. Okay. How to connect it to our iPad. And it's pretty simple. It's just like you would connect, you know, your speakers and, and everything else. I'm going in my settings and then I'm going in my Bluetooth menu. And then Bill did this lovely thing where <laughs> each micro bit has its own unique um, five digit code. Uh, so my little micro bit is called Tavag. <laughs> and I see it down there, which is kind of good because if you wanna, for whatever reason, have multiple switches connected to a device, to one device, then it is possible. And then you can figure out which is which. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to um, click on the micro bit. It's going to ask me if I want to pair. And then I'm going to say, yes, I want to pair. And then if all goes well, uh, <laughs> I'm paired and I have a smiley face. All right. And now I'm going to start working on um, just testing out and seeing if I can um, turn on switch accessibility. So I'm going to put one, um, I guess we could do the same way, right? Where you just connect the, um, the single ground, right? So I have one of these, right? I'm going down to um, accessibility. All right. And then there's this lovely option called switch control. Right now it's off. I'm going into my switches. And I want to add a new switch. And so there, iPads actually come with a lot of really lovely built-in sort of switches. You can use the cameras, you can use the screen itself. And now they even added, um, you can make sounds. <laughs> it little acts as a, as a switch, which is super cool. Um, but we're going to add an external one. All right. And now it's asking me to activate it. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, plug it in. Right. And then it sees, oh, you press the button, you press the tab. So I'm going to, um, oh, it looks like um, okay. I'm going to use the microphone and I'm going to call it um, next. Okay. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to move to the next item. All right. And then I'm going to repeat the same process for the select. So I'm going to add a new switch, external one. Okay, and this time I'm going to connect it to pin one. <laughs> well, it's funny how pin one doesn't, yeah, there it is. And then I'm going to call this enter. And the thing that I want to have happen is I want it to tap. All right. So I've set up my two switches, all right? And actually what I am gonna do is I'm gonna add, uh, I'm gonna have three, now maybe three alligator clips so that I can see if my, my scanning works. Ah, it's already 
Okay, so now I'm going to switch control back, back a menu. Okay, and my scanning style is gonna be manual. And so that's gonna let me use two buttons. All right, how's everyone doing? Okay, <laughs> so I'm turning on switch control. All right, and now you're gonna start seeing that there are these um, highlighted areas around the iPad. So my yellow, so I, I need to make a connection between my ground alligator clip and my pin one is um, moving to the next, right? So if I touch them together, I close the circuit, Oop, right? It moves on to the next area, right? And now when I touch my green and black, that's for select, right? So I'm selecting it. And now I'm gonna to touch my yellow and move down on my green and black to select. So green and black to select, right? Right, so that's kind of the, the general idea of how, so I know that my switches are connected and my scanning is connected uh, and my code is, is working properly. So for now, I'm gonna turn off switch control. Uh, say yes, all right, because I know that, that the code and the, and the Bluetooth is, is working, all right. Uh, so now we can build our little case <laughs> for for this thing. So I'm going to switch over to my desk. Does anyone have any questions about it? Or should do you guys want a little bit of time to uh, play around with it? I'll just keep going. I guess my, I have a question. Um, okay. Loretta, so is this equivalent to something that's available commercially? Yeah, it's I like have, a, I have a guess, but I want to make sure. Yeah. And, and the nice thing is that you can actually, you know, eventually customize it too. So you could do, um, yeah. So, I mean, if, yeah, you can have this, the switch can be anything. It could be a banana, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, anything that's conductive. Uh, so you can really get very creative with, um, which is something that's nice because commercially you're more limited in how you do it. Um, all right, so shall we build? <laughs> okay, all right. So this, this project, um, you should hopefully have little coroplast. Uh, oh, let me see, I can't go up any higher than that. I wonder if it's magnified, okay. Uh, and then we're gonna start with these two um, part of the templates. So I've already cut them in half. Uh, and you can just sort of, so this is kind of used to, to help guide you on where to, where to cut the coroplast. Uh, there's a lovely woman that does very fabulous uh, assistive technology devices with, uh, with coroplast. And it's a very easy material to find, uh, especially after elections and all kinds of uh, <laughs> places. So I'm just gonna kind of, Tape this down so I know where where to cut. You could also glue it down, or uh, you know. yeah, I'm just gonna tape it. And you'll see there's a uh, oh, this is very bright. Let me see if I can adjust the camera. No, it's still too bright. Okay, uh, so there are spots where the micro bit is gonna go and um, some copper tape on one end. And then on the other end is where the, um, the buttons are gonna go and um, the front of the, of the Bluetooth. And then there's some uh, lines here where you're gonna score it so that it all folds neatly into a little, a little packet in here that your micro bit can stick into. Um, again, this is just one kind of example, but you can do all kinds of um, all kinds of ideas. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use like our X-Acto knife and um, cut out the opening, the window for the, um, 
for the micro bit. I'm just going to use my straight edge. Yeah, strong my hands are. You could also probably also do this with like cardboard, uh, try wall. Anybody here work with try wall? Best stuff ever. <laughs> This is probably the hardest part of the whole thing. <laughs> All right. I do wrong. Mm. Oh, I did it backwards. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hold on. Did I do it backwards? All right. Don't do what I just did. Let me cut this end out too. All right, Oof, that was the hardest part. <laughs> okay, so now we have a little score line in here. Uh, and I'm just going, so that means I'm just gonna like cut through, but not all the way through. I'm just gonna like make a little, a little deeper cut. And I'm gonna do another one in here. So now, okay, so now I should be able to very neatly sort of fold this over. Oh yeah, I did do it backwards. Okay. <laughs> All right, and fold this one over and I have my two buttons. Okay. Oh, actually there's one more part that you wanna, you wanna be able to cut is, um, is this one right here. So you want a little opening in between. Separate the, the two buttons. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to take all like take my little template off. I don't need it anymore. I have an idea of where I want all my my things to be. All right. So here I have my two my two buttons and an opening for my micro bit and my battery pack. Okay. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, pierce a little bit of a hole uh, in the center of each one. And this is where I'm going to feed uh, 
the brads through. And we're using brads because they um, are conductive. <laughs> All right, so I'm actually going to use the um, the circular part uh, on the inside of the because um, it's going to make contact with um, with the conductive copper tape. All right, so the brad is going to go on the inside, and then you can kind of open it up. Actually, yeah. Okay, and then the other brad, the other brad, is going to go on the inside like that. Okay. And then we kind of want to leave it, leave it open. I'm going to use my um, <clears throat> copper tape, and I'm going to kind of figure out where these two things make contact with each other. All right. Um, before I tape the copper tape down, I'm going to want to get my wires ready. All right. So I'm going to take. I have like a general idea of where I want everything to be. So I'm going to take my one of my alligator clips. I only need two of them. I'm going to cut it in half. And now I'm going to um, strip maybe about, what is that, an inch and a half? out of the end. Um, if uh, there are little gauge numbers on here, I think I'm going to use, what is this about? 16, 16. I'm going to slide it through. Uh, and you don't want to uh, press too hard, uh, but just a little hard enough so that you can pull it and it'll, no, I guess it's 18. Right. So that you could still have some of the, the wire showing. All right, and we're going to do that same thing to the other one. I'm just going to give it a yank and strip it okay. so that we have a little bit of wire showing. So these are the wires I'm going to be using for my um, pin one and pin zero. And I'm just going to kind of uh, loop them around my brad. Take it out. Okay, push it through. And then open it up. Okay, and do the same thing for the other pin. Loop it around. Push it through. All right, so I have my wires for my pin zero, my pin one, and now I need my alligator clip for my ground, right? I'm gonna use the black one. Again, I'm gonna cut it in half. I'm going to strip maybe about an inch for this one. Oh, not 16. All right. And this one, I'm actually going to. Let's see how we're going to do it. I'm going to take this copper one and I'm going to. Um, tape it under the copper tape, okay? So I want it to be about over here so that the two brads are touching. Right. I'm gonna peel the back of my copper tape. <laughs> fine motor skills, <laughs> not so fine. Okay. Make 
sure that the brads are touching the copper. Okay. All right, and now I can connect. Actually, I think I'm gonna unplug my. Almost done. Funny. So this one has like a speaker, which makes it a little bit higher now, <laughs> and it doesn't uh, it doesn't lay flat anymore. So you can you know like double. Oh um yeah, maybe what we could do now is we can put a little bit of the, the rubber band over it to kind of stop things from flying up. And now um, I use like a little bit of a double double sided tape on the back of this battery pack. If you have that, you can, you know, that'll kind of fasten it nicely into place. And the micro bit, you know, you can use some double, double, you know, make some tape circles or find some other, some other way to fasten it. Okay, and now all that's left is to connect everything all together, right? So this one's going to go clip onto my pin zero. This one's, I mean, my pin one. This one's my pin zero. And this one's my ground. Okay, maybe I'll even take it down a little bit more on top. Uh, and now I'm going to power it up. The nice thing is, is that it remembers everything. I'm going to slide in the battery pack. It's a little tricky. If it doesn't go in one way, then it'll. Ah. Okay. And now let me see if I can switch back to my iPad. Kind of see what. Oh, so now I'm going to turn on my switch control. Okay. I'm going to click my. I might have to play around a little bit with the. It's probably pressing down a little too much. Okay. But that's the general idea. So you can uh, play around with the with the, the contact between the brad and the copper tape to make sure. I think it's because I started it in the opposite upside down direction. <laughs> ah! so, uh, so that's like one general way that you can build it, but really anything conductive any way you want to build it, um, you can kind of um, connect anything. And you can even have a third button through pin two to send uh, whatever command. You can add a shortcut to it. You can, yeah. Uh, and Bill's is super nice. So, so the, the foot switches have a kind of a really distinct uh, effect to them. <laughs> They're very, very noticeable. Um, and um, you can get foot switches, guitar foot pedal switches I, with, with three buttons as well. And um, so I the foot switch on Amazon was about $19 that included the cable and then a couple of bucks more for the, um, um, the uh, bolts. So all together with the micro bit and the switch, this was about $40 total to get something that's, that's pretty rugged and, and holds together pretty good. It's beautiful. <laughs> There's also, I'm just going to switch. Like this is the, with the arcade, the arcade version. Let me see if I can 
Uh, so this is with the arcade buttons and some uh, tri-wall cardboard. Smack it. <laughs> and send, uh, send your Bluetooth things out there. That's, that's the gist. <laughs> Any questions or ideas or, I mean, I feel like you had some great ideas about data collection. <laughs> can, can we find a 3D, 3D printed uh, plan for uh, the, the Maki Maki or, uh, not Maki Maki, uh, Microbyte? Mm -hmm. the, uh, does it already exist? So, so there are like three, like you can check Thingiverse and people have already created like cases for it. Mm -hmm. um, and you could certainly modify some of the existing designs. Um, so I don't think either of us have, have created a 3D design specifically to do this. Oh, I did. Well, well, I made one for, um, I teach after school coding and uh, there aren't that many for version two yet because of the speaker in the back. It like, there's a lot of them for version one. <laughs> So I can, uh, I'll send you the link to the one that's, it doesn't quite, uh, it doesn't have like a, you'll just have to be able to connect the alligator clips to the pins and then, and then you're on your own. You can figure out any kind of way to, uh, to make it. I didn't uh, succeed, success very, very good like now, but uh, can we, uh, the next step for me is to learn soldering. Can we can we do that on this? Um, it's you can solder directly to it. I, I'd be a little bit cautious doing that. It, 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 if soldering's a little bit sloppy, it runs over to the additional pins. But but, but there's no reason you can't. Um, you'd probably want to use a little bit of flux to make sure it adheres and all that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm thinking there's also like a lot of, well, not a lot of boards that'll do Bluetooth. Yeah. And, yeah, our, they, and our like more, yeah, and, we'll, and our block based coding. Yeah, yeah, the, this platform, the micro bit, seems to be a good balance between reasonably cheap and, uh, and easy to use. Um, so that's, yeah, well, one of the reasons this seemed like a, a, a good fit. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, the boards that you would that you'd want to solder into, they're usually programmed either in like C or Circuit Python or Python Micro Python. Okay. Yeah, so it gets a, it gets a little bit more. Comp Not impossible. There are lots of instructions out there, and you could do it. <laughs> it, it might take more than half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Loretta. Uh huh. Could um show me again the the external switches how you connected those oh yeah sure uh so for like the amazon ones the like the the arcade Mark. switches yeah so the arcade switches are um they come with these uh, what are they called bill what are these uh uh, I'm not sure, if, uh, are they spade connectors? Is that what they're called? Yeah, so these are like the spade connectors, the jumper connectors. Uh, and oh, the well. arcade, arcade buttons usually come with these kind of uh, switches. I, for, I, the name escapes me what they're called. Um, but then it's the same idea. One, one of them is the ground and one of them goes to the pin. Um, and so, This one is the ground. So there's three, the two grounds go right. in here. And then this other one, this third ground connects to an alligator clip. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and then you do the same thing. You can do a jumper to an alligator and a jumper to an alligator. And then, okay. Yeah. And I mean, like Amazon has a ridiculous amount of switches and ways to and buttons and uh, all different pressures and um so your Thanks. your imagination is is the limit <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah you're welcome all right 
So I think maybe next time we'll do one with the mouse emulation when I figure it out with my head. (laughs) That'll be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you can also, yeah. And the other ones are, um, you can also make it like a music player with the media controls. You can play and pause music, go to the next, um, all kinds of creative ways to control your iPad. Yes. So the, the Bluetooth stuff will work okay on Windows. I, I don't know that Windows has quite the same inherent accessibility features for doing the scanning. It, it might have something, I'm just not sure. But um, it also works with Mac and uh, Android and, and obviously iOS. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, so let me let me post the um, let me let me uh, do the the slides again. I'm going to do the links again for people that weren't there when I first. So this one's for the deck, this first, uh, and this one is for the build instructions. All right, that I built backwards because that's what I always do. <laughs> I always solder things upside down and. <laughs> inside out and good grief. Um, uh, uh, so, so if anyone uh, has any questions about like the, the coding part or I'm certainly happy to help. So um, welcome to contact me, bsiever at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think they're, oh, I skipped right through there. Yeah, our, na- our emails are on the, um, on the slides. want to reach out. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And and I'll post this on um on YouTube somewhere and send you guys the link. So if you want to look at it again, it'll be there. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you. Bye everybody. Oh, Good night. Good night. I'm gonna stop the Stop the recording.